And of course, remember, in the current culture of the world, the culture of lack of haya, the more aggressive we are, men and women, the more civilized we become. And the more we affirm ourselves. Isn't it true? Al-khumul wa tawadu' that becomes what? Becomes a sign of weakness and a sign of subjugation, especially about women. Huh? Isn't it true? Women who speak soft and, oh, you still live in the medieval ages. You're still under the control of that chauvinist husband, isn't it? And all that intellectualization and legitimization of lack of haya. Remember, that's why some of our ulama have said, Al-haya hasanun, walakinnahu fi nisa'i ahsan. Haya is beautiful from every creature, every man and woman. But from women, it is even more beautiful. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said to a companion in an authentic text whom he saw admonishing his brother and telling him, you know, this haya is not, is not going to take you anywhere. You have heard that before? You're too shy. You're not aggressive enough. This haya is not going to take you anywhere. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa our master psychologist. Ya Rasulullah, forgive me for this analogy. I just only intend to, to elucidate a case. And then he told him, Da'ahu, fa'inna al-haya'a kulluhu khayr. He told him, leave him. Haya, all of it is good. An aggressive behavior and shouting and loudness that becomes an example of civility, an example of, uh, of advancement, an example of ability, isn't it? And we also, many of us, believe that now. And it has become part of our lives, unfortunately. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was described كان Rasulullah كان أشد حياء من العذراء في خدرها This text describes him, his حياء His حياء was more intense more pronounced, more obvious than the حياء of an unmarried young woman in her private quarter this tells us some other things, of course. Once upon a time, unfortunately for now, yes, a young woman, especially unmarried, was the most beautiful expression of hair. To the extent that she cannot even say, not she cannot, some of them wouldn't even say, yes, I want to marry this man. That statement was an expression of lack of hair. And therefore, in that culture, says Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa if she doesn't respond, because it's a culture of hayat, that means yes, I want to marry this man. إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاصْنَعْ مَا شِئْتِ said he sallallahu alayhi wa What means, if you have no hayat, you're going to do as you please. Which means, those people who say, do what you like. Give the reins to your nafs. That is an expression of lack of hair. And therefore, a person who lets his nafs or her nafs guide and lead and hold the reins, that person has no hair. And remember, haya is the defining characteristic of this deen. Inna li kulli deen in khuluqa wa inna khuluqa al Islam al haya, said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this authentic text. Every deen has its own defining characteristic, and the khuluq, the state, remember, of nafs, the defining characteristic of Islam is haya. 
And he said, الْحَيَاءُ وَالْإِيمَانُ قُرِنَا جَمِيعًا فَإِذَا رُفِعَ أَحَدُهُمَا رُفِعَ الْآخَرُ Subhanallah. He said, I didn't. I'm only a student. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, Iman, essential. And haya, qurina jami'an. They have been always held together. If one of them is lifted, then the other one is lifted. That means what? If there is iman, there is haya. If there is no iman, there is no haya. If there is little iman, there is little haya. If there is a lot of iman, there is a lot of haya. If there is no haya, there is no iman. In other words, these are indicators, if you will, by which we gauge, if you will, the level of iman of ourselves and of our surroundings. Haya. Did I say here yesterday, did I speak of the root of haya yesterday? No, okay. So, subhanallah, haya is indeed the characteristic of this deen. And look, even in the language itself, it is expressed. Because haya, the root of haya is hayya. And the root of haya, what is haya? Life. And haya is this characteristic that we're talking about. And when you in the Arabic language say, Istahya fulan. Istahya in the Arabic language, this word is, if you will, uh, is, is, a, um, uh, is, is a homonym. One word has more than one meaning. Istahya means to show haya. But also it means to resuscitate. To give life, to keep alive. As if this Quran and this deen is telling us what? If there is no haya, there is no haya. In other words, a life without haya is not a life. It is a life, remember, of the lowest three levels of the nafs. Life in that sense, but not life in the level sought, the level of al nafsu al malaikiya. And if we live without haya, we are like cattle, like predators, like shayateen wal billah. Yet haya is one of those things that would disappear and would be would become rare commodities, if you will, of alamatu sa'ah. And sorry, I am sorry, I, am, I regret to observe, and may Allah help me myself as well, that in the Muslim communities, in the world and in this country, we have espoused a lot of lack of hair values in our conduct with each other, individually, in our families, and so on. We have taken those lack of hair values. And your Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna li kulli deenin khuluqa wa inna khuluqa li islami al I translated that already. Remember that. And he had more hair than a young unmarried woman in her private quarters. The young unmarried woman in her private quarters because she used to be the best, the most beautiful expression of this most beautiful characteristic of this deen. Until such time when through what I call moral entropy, the increase of moral entropy that is the decadence in morality, until subhanallah, Aggressive behavior, aggressive dress, please allow me, becomes the norm. Until our children 
when they become 17, they don't even know what hayat means. And they feel very comfortable in the ways they are. Because, forgive me, forgive me, I have to say these words for me to learn. And then perhaps for you. We have cultivated in our children more of the cattle-like nafs and the predator-like nafs and the shaitani-like nafs. An imbalanced nafs. However, remember, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Allah's rahma is open. Allah's gates are still open until the last breath of life. We still have time. But realize that those who started before us are far ahead in their journey. We begin late, we'll arrive late. But hopefully at least we will arrive. It is never late. Insha'Allah ta'ala ya Rabb, to begin the course.